Hello, I am back in the garden. I am so excited because I have not been in the garden since October. But today I need to get all my roses ready. If you remember this rose, and it needs to go ahead and get pruned really well because I want the roses to grow where they are really good for bouquets. So you can either softly prune them and have like a flush where it just looks like a lot of little roses and it looks really beautiful. Or this year, I wanna prune them back a lot and have really nice large roses for a bouquet with long stems. So I'm gonna work on that and show you exactly what I do to go ahead and prepare my roses for spring. Now I know that I did a video before and I gave exactly what I do throughout the season to go ahead and deadhead and feed it and do all of those things for the roses. But this is a little different because this is to get them ready to wake up and get going. There are already, as you can see, getting leaves. It's a little late, but I got COVID and I've been really sick. I'm still a little sick, but I just want to take care of this. I have probably around 10 or 11 roses to do. I don't know if I'll have the strength to do them all today, but I am going to try. But I want to show you a climbing rose and then a rose that I have on a cone trellis that I treat like a tree and then a tree rose and see how I do each one of those to get them shaped and ready to bloom and to give me a ton of roses. Now, if you want to learn more about the type of roses you should get so they bloom all season long and are just one or two flushes, how to feed them, how to plant them, all the little tips, I'll go ahead and link a video below that goes into a lot of detail. But I'm going to clarify some things on pruning and then feeding the rose as far as liquid food that I mentioned the last time. I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about that because I did get some questions and comments. So let's get going. Now this rose is doing pretty good. You can see that the stems, they're really, really healthy. I do have some thinner stems. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut back a lot of this because they're kind of flimsy. I want them to get much stronger and give me some really long sort of stems and really large blooms and also have some crossing on some of the branches that you can see. So go ahead and make sure that you go through it and take your time. Listen, I know it's scary and we don't wanna prune them back a lot because we think, oh my God, is it gonna come back? Yes, it's gonna come back. So you just be kind to them, just prune them, don't worry about them. Roses are pretty resilient and they do come back. So this is what I'm doing is for the repeat bloomer where it blooms all season long. So those are the kind of roses I get for my tiny garden. So it may be different on a larger garden, but for me in my tiny garden, this is exactly what I do. And I'll just share with you and see if you want to treat the roses that you have the same way or even get some new ones. Make sure that you have some really good pruners. They're sharp, they're clean, and that you're not going to damage the stems. If they're not sharp enough, they're, they can damage and squash the stem, just crush it, and you don't want that. So. You can tell I have some crossing branches like this, some really thin ones. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I have pretty healthy, these are turning brown, which um, I'm okay with. It's, it's still giving me some good branches from it. This one is doing okay. I'm not gonna worry, it has a little scraping and then I have this one that's a, a newer one that's coming out right here. You can see I have one, two, three. But I am going to go ahead and prune some of the branches that are coming in. And you can see, can you see those little, let me try to zoom in. And if you can see this little red dots right there. Those are new little branches, like little stems and buds that are gonna start coming out. There's one there, one there. This one here is growing in. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it all the way back. I don't want it to be crossing. So, and then this right here, it does have some space in between. It's pretty close, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it and just 
trim out some of these things on it you see these kind of little branches like this i'm gonna go ahead and start trimming these back some of them this is coming from that one there see how skinny that is look how skinny i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that so the ones that are super skinny like this i cut all the way back to the main stem like here's another one super super skinny i'm gonna go ahead and cut it all the way back i don't really want it and then the rest of them i'm gonna leave those those three main stems and then i am going to go ahead and start trimming any of this so i'm going to go ahead and step back and start cutting back here's one going all the way in i'm gonna go ahead and cut it back and i'm gonna keep going here's this one you can see it's kind of like messy with a lot of little branches i'm gonna look back and i see one tiny branch there i'm gonna cut it back and then i'm gonna cut right before this new little butt starts coming out so now and actually i'm seeing that it's crossing this one here see how that is crossing i'm gonna just go ahead and prune it all the way back i don't want it because it's just gonna get not gonna be as good here's another branch i'm gonna follow and i'm just gonna cut it all the way back to i'm trying to see there's a bud there i'm gonna cut it to the first one that's showing about coming out and then here's another one i'm gonna cut this thin one here to kind of look at what i have and i think again this is great because you're gonna have a lot of little roses come out but i want to i want to grow to get really large buds so I'm going to go, you see how, you see how there is a little butt coming out down here? Everything above it, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it all off. And just see how, now this is gonna give me some, a lot more stronger type of um, stems coming out. Me, I'm a home gardener this is what I do I'm not an expert but I feel like when I do that eek, I'm giving it the strength to wake up to the core of the plant versus this kind of sickly old like thin stems so I'm gonna keep trimming here keep looking and it, it takes time but it's totally worth this so here's another one here's the stem see how it's on a kind of has like a Y. I'm gonna go all the way back and this one is crossing another branch. So I'm gonna bring it around and I am going to go ahead and go to here and get rid of all this. I know it seems like a lot but it's gonna be so much better for the plant. So I'm gonna keep doing this and just kind of talking you through what I'm doing. I start from the bottom up usually so I'm gonna look here's one I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this main stem so let me lower this here's the plant and you see there's a lot of leaves already going but I'm going to go back all the way to this see how it's coming out here a hole I'm gonna go all the way to that Here's like a really weak one. This is super weak right here. Super flimsy. I'm gonna cut it all the way back. You're gonna be so glad when you cut it back. It's gonna give you incredible roses. Here's another one going all the way. I'm gonna go all the way down to here. And get rid of this whole piece 
and now this is going to be much stronger it's already giving a lot you, you can usually see it has a lot a lot of leaves and like a really red sort of put together stem kind of like this see this kind of like this but it is much stronger it has a lot more things happening around it so I'm, I prefer to keep those so let me keep going here Here's another really good example. So see how this is, how it is like growing a lot of red on it. There's a lot happening. Everything else past it is kind of weak. Here yeah, it says leaves, but the leaves are not as beautiful and strong. This is like really growing a beautiful branch up. So I'm gonna cut right there. I'm gonna cut right, right here and that will do so much better. So when you're pruning, you have to kind of figure out what you're pruning for. Am I pruning to shape the rows? Am I pruning because I need to deadhead to get more flowers? Or am I waking up the plant to go ahead and give me the best that it can give me? So there's different reasons to prune a rose and if you're not really understanding exactly the goal, then it's gonna be a different outcome that may not be what you're looking for so I'm gonna keep pruning I am so excited to be out here it is freezing 29 degrees is cold this this morning but I can't even feel my hands right now but I'm gonna get to work even the hummingbird is happy <laughs> did you hear that <laughs> I'm gonna get to work there is clusters like this that are just too full so I'm going to go ahead and cut those back a lot because it's too much going on i have like little flimsy ones that probably had a rose and i didn't want to get rid of it so i'm gonna get rid of that so so here's another example you see this right here let me make sure you can see it yeah so there's all this stuff going on and this looks super healthy and then there's nothing here not worth keeping all of this because it's putting strength for all this stuff and it should be putting strength to get the main stem really strong so for me i like to just prune it back i'm gonna prune it to this first little bud here it's hard for you to see but there's one coming out here I'm gonna do it to that so if you see there's nothing here and there's a few buds coming but why am I gonna spend the energy on those I want to go ahead and take it all the way back and then have it give me a huge rose so have you started working on the garden yet I have not been in the garden since October I have so much to do and getting sick has really put me behind i have to get my garden beds ready I, first of all i have to do all the roses because i have probably 10 or 11 roses and i have a few coming like three of them that need to be planted so i have to remove the ones i'm, re I'm moving out and giving to my friend i have to prune back my hydrangeas i have to get my uh, beds garden beds ready I don't get my garden beds ready in the fall because it rains here so much that it ends up wasting. Everything just washes out and I think it not only contaminates the, the, all that water and all that stuff goes back to the Puget Sound. So I prefer just to wait until now and then they're out for another month. I don't have to plant anything because it starts really late here. It's cold until May or okay to grow on the fresh soil. So. Ooh. 
I'm hung up on this thorn. So I'm gonna keep working because I have plenty to do. It's one that's crossing here, so I think I'm gonna remove this one all the way. I want I have so many plants for the garden this year. We are redoing the pond because I want to add another garden bed. That's going to be a big job. Uh, I have an idea and I hope it works. I'm not sure if it will. And then I really would like to get a greenhouse going. I'm really excited about that. I hope we can do it. I have an idea how to do it, but um, I need to put it on paper and I'm gonna buy the greenhouse, but around it we have a lot of work to get ready. I'm gonna cut, I clean all the branches from here. I want to keep it as clean as possible. And I'm gonna take all the dead leaves and remove them because this is disease waiting to happen. So you don't, I mean, literally the spores will fly and get to the plant. And now that it's getting leaves, you don't want this getting to it. So I'm going to remove all the leaves that are around it that are dead. Clean the bottom and all of the branches are pruned. This is a hard prune and hopefully it will give us amazing flowers like it did last year. So now I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, some compost and I am going to give it some fertilizer. As far as fertilizer, which is what I placed first, I used a rose stone, but you can use whatever brand you want to use. Just anything for flowers is fine. Where the middle number is higher, it will be good for established plants, uh, rose plants, so that it blooms and it gives it more food. So again, that I'm going to put a link below for the previous video I did on roses. And I explain all about the numbers that you need to know about when you buy your fertilizer. And uh, that will help you decide what you want to use. But this is the one I used. I've had it for a long time. It lasts me quite a while. And then I use compost and this is fish compost. And also I love it for everything that I do, whether it's growing flowers or food. I am not sponsored. I just love this stuff. It has hardwoods and it has organic matter and it has fish compost from Alaska. So it is just really clean. I love it. My plants react really well to it. So I'm going to use these and show you exactly what I do to uh, go ahead and feed my rose and get it established. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and get my gloves. And it's super easy. This is all I do. I'm going to remove this pot and this is the main crown here. I'm going to make sure all the leaves are off. I want it really, really clean before I put anything there. Now this rose is planted really close to the concrete patio. So I want to always treat it really, really well. And all I'm going to do is take some of this food. And I am going to sprinkle it all the way around. You don't have to do an excess. Now it rains here a lot. So if the soil wasn't wet, I would wet it really well before I put it, place the fertilizer on. I like to put it all the way around, but it rains here nonstop. And it's about to start raining this week again for another three, four days. So. So don't do a super excess because it's also not good. You're just going to wash away the fertilizer into the environment and you don't want that either. It's not going to absorb more than what it needs. So I don't want to harm the plant. And then all I do is I put this gorgeous compost on top of it. And this will re- So go ahead and place the soil all the way around. And I place it a little bit out of the center because the root ball, right? If the root ball is not only here, the root ball is 
is a diameter like this so I'm gonna go ahead and take it a little bit out and that's it and now it's gonna rain here starting the day after tomorrow and the great thing with this mulch which I've spoken about before is because it has hardwood pieces it's already asked uh, sorry it already acts as a mulch so I don't need to mulch or do anything which I try not to mulch anything because I have a huge amount of slugs because of the rain here so I try not to do that but this compost is perfect for that so that's it that one is ready so now that the rose is all set up and I pruned it I want to tell you how I go ahead and attach it or tie it to the trellis so these are the main canes so I call them stem branches whatever you want to call them it doesn't really matter but these don't they don't bloom only the little ones that come off it those are the ones that bloom right so you have however many you want to have I have four of them growing two adult mamas and then two that are coming out so the way that you should be doing it is where you wrap it horizontal so this is like an S going like this and then the small stems come off of it and they're vertical to go up and down right so it fills the whole trellis but I don't do that to this trellis. One, because it's really narrow, and two is because it is so open that we get windstorms here. And I am so scared that they will break the branches. We get some really, we've had so many things break. There's nothing shielding this trellis. And because it's narrow, I'm okay with it, but I kind of train it. So I'll be training and probably pruning a little more on this one because I have some that are crossing um, so I'm going to be doing that but I want to show you the garden is <laughs> a bit of a mess but I'm getting there so this one here I moved it was in a pot and I planted it here and I have some main canes that are growing and I'm going to train this one because this is deep I'm gonna train it to be on an S and the main branches the smaller branches that are the ones that get the blooms they'll be vertical and go up and down that way it'll feel this really well you can tell it's like really windy already today and this is nothing but this one I have the fence here I have that tree there I have this tree here so I don't mind with the the shrubs that I have and trees and things and fence it protects the branches a little more so this one I will do that way uh, the way you're supposed to do it with the S and I'll start training it out uh, here pretty soon this year now I have another clim uh, climbing rose this one here and this is the one I showed in the last video and I I do this one as a tree so I do not train it to grow on my fence. That's not what I want. I want to just have it be vertical because I have a super small yard and garden and I want to just have it just be a vertical piece to give height to this bed. And you've seen how this one grows, I'll show you. And it works really well. So it just really depends what you want of each of your climbing roses. And just, you just have to know that your main stems or whatever you want to call it canes whatever you want to call it those don't bloom it's the little babies that come of it those are the small canes those are going to have the blooms on it so you have to decide what you want depending on where you have it in us small gardens it's a real challenge so and i'm gonna go and take care of my rose trees next let's go Hi, I'm Melba and I'm an urban gardener. I love to grow as much as I can in my tiny backyard in food and flowers. I'm going to do now this rose trees. I love rose trees. If you remember these were like white roses, I'll show you right now. But right now they definitely need to get pruned. And a mistake I made last year is I just 
was in a hurry and I did not prune them all the way back. And when they don't prune all the way back, I'll show you again what happens. They fall over. So they grow way too long. So I'm gonna cut these all the way back, really short. And then after I cut them back, then I'm gonna start taking all the inside little branches out. Those little stems just really don't do anything for you. And uh, hopefully it will be much stronger and has a much stronger core. And the, the center will be all open to get airflow throughout. So that's my goal for these. And I have that one and that one over there. By the way, look at these. The alliums are coming out. There's a couple different allium types coming out. And they came out so early this year and I thought, oh my gosh, they're gonna they're gonna die because it got really really cold. It's been getting quite chilly, but now they're doing just fine. So I have all these coming out. I'm so excited. I love it because they have some have this really wide leaf. I think these are the globe masters and then these are smaller ones. And uh, they have a skinnier leaf. I can't wait for these to bloom. see it it's another angle you can see it's growing into the inside instead of growing outward Taking out all the ones that are diseased also. All these stems that are like really dried. But I'm mainly going to bring it back a lot. Well, it's pretty far, but there's a little red bud. I'm gonna go right in front of it. Oh, there's a thorn right on my finger. Ow. This is why I try to get thornless. Even if they're not thornless, they are hardly any thorns compared to this. That are just flimsy growing out. I'm going to cut all of those off. I go ahead and keep ouch, the ones that are coming from the crown, not the ground. I need some rose gloves, but I don't have any because I've been getting rid of all the ones with thorns but I may need some because there's some that I do not want to get rid of. Now I can train them to come all the way up. It will be a lot better. I think I'm gonna get rid of this and see if I just train the new ones that shoot out of here to go in. There's one pointing out. I'm gonna get rid of that one too. 
and then a new one. That looks really good. So now everything's inside the cone, the metal trellis. And I can train whatever grows to go in and just come all the way inside of those circles and stay there and not get too wide and unruly. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the floor and feed it with a compost and fertilizer and that's the last one today. All right, I got done with the roses. All I have to do is just tie them, which I show also on the previous video, but look what I got. This is the Emily Bronte. I got the two tree roses. It's a bare root. So on another video, I'll show you what I do to plant it, but look how good it looks. It is like budding already. So I'm going to be planting this today when the rain stop. It's stunning. Look how tall it is super super happy so i'll be showing you this in a separate video but right now i want to talk to you about the food the liquid food and just clarify a few things that i think are going to be really helpful okay so i have spoken about super bloom and more bloom and it will be on that previous video it will go into details about all of the numbers that you see here but i just wanted to clarify how to use it so more bloom it doesn't have as high of a number for the bloom stem cell which is the middle number but it's still pretty high so you can use this and i would start with more bloom first and then if you're getting no buds after you've been putting compost then i go into super bloom now this is what i do i don't i do this once a week but not the whole season and i just want to clarify that a little bit with you when you use either one of them this is what i love to do is i do the fertilizer which is a slow release to wake up it's kind of like a bear <laughs> i call it i kind of think of it like that it's a bear waking up it's really hungry but you can't feed it like a ton at one time so the slow release is better to start with in march and then what i do come may after it's just used that up in may and of may when it starts getting warmer i make sure the ground is really wet before i use this and i went through the measurements but as far as how much I put, I only put a cup around the rows. I don't put a gallon of it or anything like that. I only put a cup, two cups, depending how big the rose is. And I do it once a week, but if it's really wet, that's why I do it once a week. But when it starts drying up in July, August, I don't do it once a week. It may be every three weeks or every four weeks. And if I feed it again, the fertilizer, the slow relief fertilizer, I do it in March. I may do it like in May, June, around there, or again in August. That's the last time I feed the rose. So if you are feeding that slow release, you don't need to put any of that. Also, you have to kind of study the rose. I look to see, does it have so many leaves on it? If it has a ton of leaves, I don't want to put extra nitrogen on it. It means that it's doing good because then it's going to keep producing leaves and no buds. But if it's not giving me buds and I need to just give it a little extra food, the liquid fertilizer is just instant. It's really, really good. Just do not feed them both the slow release and that is just too much food. So these are my favorite ones to use, but there's other ones out there you can. It just happens that I try those and I love them. But do not use them to excess. You have to kind of get to know your rose and how it's doing it and just study it and see. So if you have any questions let me know and I'll be happy to answer on the comments below.